Es para mí una gran alegría, un gran honor poder entrevistar hoy a su eminencia el Cardenal Burke, norteamericano de Wisconsin, ha sido prefecto de la asignatura apostólica y en este momento es el gran patrono de la Orden de Malta. Una persona, una personalidad que se ha destacado por su amor extraordinario a la Iglesia y a Jesucristo y por su claridad y valentía a la hora de defender la tradición, es decir, el dogma, eh, la moral de la Iglesia que ha sido idéntica durante 20 siglos. Eminencia, muchas gracias por concederme esta entrevista. Very happy to, to speak with you and especially about this most important subject. Thank you. Eminencia, si se llegara a aprobar la comunión para los divorciados vueltos a casar, ¿cómo afectaría esto a la familia y a la iglesia? En effect, it's not possible to permit those who are bound to a marriage and have attempted another marriage to receive Holy Communion because they're living publicly in one of the most serious of sins, uh, 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 adultery. It would be to, to act directly contrary to the word of Christ, who said in the gospel, he who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And it's clear that uh, the disciples understood the seriousness of what our Lord was saying because they responded, if it is so, then perhaps it's better not to marry. And our Lord responded, assuring them that God gives the grace to live in fidelity uh, to those whom he calls to marriage. So the effect would be uh, basically to uh, introduce uh, uh, into, the Ameri into the life of the church an element which would lead to the breakdown of the family and to the, in that way to the gravest harm to the church because The family is the first cell of the life of the church. It's what in the Second Vatican Council, according to the ancient description, called the, the domestic church, the church at home. Eminencia, pero algunos están pidiendo que en nombre de la pastoral y de la misericordia se hagan excepciones y se permita a los divorciados eh, vueltos a casar que comulguen. D dicen, el dogma no se toca, eh, la indisolubilidad del matrimonio permanece, pero por la misericordia y por la pastoral, estas personas concretas que puedan comulgar. Sí. This is a result of a fundamental confusion of the relationship between dogma and practice. But the practice always follows the truth of the dogma and the greatest act of charity, the greatest act of mercy towards uh, any member of the faithful is to help that person to live in accord with the truth of Christ, in accord with the truth of the teaching of our faith. Uh, and therefore, uh, it is not at all showing mercy to, to the faithful who are in these sad and difficult circumstances uh, to, to tell them a lie, to say, oh, it, it's all right for you to receive Holy Communion even though you're living publicly in contradiction to the word of Christ. And so this is a false compassion. It's inspired by a kind of sentimentalism. Uh, it's also uh, inspired by a, a, a false sense of who we are, a forgetfulness of the of the of our being, this, our state in life as our way of being. And this is not something that that changes with with time and so forth. Uh, uh, once we have given ourselves in in marriage, we remain married until death uh, aparts us. Eminencia, otros dicen que eh, se deje a las conferencias episcopales libertad para decidir en cada país lo que hay que hacer. This is uh, also a very uh, iniquitous uh, proposal because it is in fact uh, uh, based on a Protestant principle The, the Catholic Church is one throughout the whole world. We are the only church who has one faith, one discipline, uh, one, uh, how should we say, one life of the sacraments and of prayer. And so to begin to say that each uh, nation can begin to 
to decide fundamental questions of the faith and its practice is simply to deny the Catholicity of the Church and to introduce a, a Protestant principle which would lead then to national churches and to and, and once this principle of, of division enters in uh, it will simply multiply itself as it has done in the Protestant churches. También hay otra, otra hipótesis de trabajo que se va a plantear en el sínodo es crear un camino penitencial al final del cual los divorciados vueltos a casar puedan comulgar. ¿Será posible que al acabar este camino penitencial puedan comulgar sin aceptar la castidad o será necesario que ellos acepten vivir en castidad al final del camino penitencial? <risa> The penitential way can only lead in one direction, exactly in the direction that you state, uh, the direction of finding the way to live chastely uh, in in one's state in life, and so for and so the the camino, the pastoral way, uh, the penitential way, excuse me, uh, has to be a way that helps the individual to truly repent, and repentance. It includes uh, necessarily uh, the amendment of one's life, the change of one's life. So that if, if I repent of the fact that I'm living in an irregular union, I'm living in a state of adultery, that means that I have to find a way of living in which I no longer am committing adultery, but am chaste. Eminencia, eh, el sínodo sobre la familia parece que está girando en torno a este problema de la comunión de los divorciados, pero la familia eh, tiene muchos más problemas y hay muchos aspectos. Eh, eh, todo se está centrando en esto, pero es, es mucho más grande e importante el resto de las cuestiones. ¿Qué le diría usted hoy a una familia católica? I would say to the to the two Catholic families that the Synod by its very nature is to help them to live in fidelity to their to the high calling to incarnate the life of the Holy Family of Nazareth and that uh, and I would encourage them very much if they are experiencing which is only natural in this world sufferings and challenges I would encourage them very much to draw upon the grace of the sacrament of holy matrimony in order to remain faithful and to create a, a home in which there is reflected the, the, the divine love which is given to a husband and wife uh, through the sacrament of holy matrimony. And uh, this is, uh, um, is the message, uh, should be the message of the Synod. Um, I think that uh, uh, sadly, uh, this concentration on the question of those who are in irregular unions uh, and the possibility of offering to them uh, Holy Communion uh, has a wider scope, which was also uh, indicated during the session of the Synod in October of 2014. Uh, and that scope is to begin to say that, that other individuals who are living in public sin could also receive the sacraments because during that session of the Synod quickly there was introduced uh, the subject of those who are cohabitating uh, living as husband and wife without the sacrament of marriage and also the question of the of, of those people who are attracted to the same sex uh, attempting to live some kind of a, of a, of a union and uh, what I fear is that uh, by saying that in some cases, according to the decision of the bishop or the, of the a priest delegated by the bishop, that individuals who are living in adultery could receive Holy Communion, uh, there will naturally be the extension to say, well, those who are living in a state of fornication, uh, they're not married, but they're living as wife should also be admitted to the, the sacraments or those who are living publicly uh, in, a, in a homosexual uh, rapport should also be able to receive the sacraments. And this would redound clearly in all three cases to a great scandal in the church and a great breakdown of church life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Mm -hmm. 
Una última pregunta, Eminencia. Nos dicen, a los que estamos defendiendo la moral y la doctrina de siempre, nos dicen, nos acusan de estar contra el Papa Francisco. ¿Qué opina usted de esto? ¿Qué opina de estas acusaciones que a muchos de nosotros nos hacen? Sí, uh, sí, entiendo esta acusación porque también ha sido contra mí. Uh, this is absurd. I remember during the uh, October 2014 session of the Synod, one of the cardinals came up to me and said, what is happening here? Those of us who are defending what the Church has always taught and practiced are now called the enemies of the Pope. And I, I simply uh, respond in this way. I am completely loyal to the Holy Father. Uh, I'm at his service, and the best way that I can serve him is by defending the Church's teaching and practice for which he has the greatest possible responsibility. And uh, the Holy Father has not uh, said to the best of my knowledge uh, that, that he favors these proposals uh, which have been brought forth either for the communion, uh, giving Holy Communion, the the sacraments to the divorced and remarried or to other people who are living in public sin and so it's simply false to 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 call those who are defending the church's teaching and practice enemies of the pope but i think it's a, it's a kind of tool of the evil one in order to carry forward this agenda create this confusion that somehow uh, the holy father is in favor of these Of these uh, practices, these proposals. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias, Eminencia. Thank you very much. Estamos ante un auténtico padre de la Iglesia que, con una gran valentía, está defendiendo la doctrina, defendiendo la moral y, además, siendo precisamente por eso profundamente leal como acaba de decir a su santidad el Papa. Es un honor, repito, estar con él. Le rezamos por el éxito del sínodo. Sí, this is the most important is that all of us pray and work diligently for the good result from the synod of bishops. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.